Hello and welcome. My name's Chris. Um, this is Awesome Air Hockey. This is my first tutorial uh, in this series, and it will be covering the games design uh, section. So this is stage one, lesson one, and it's the games design section. Um, before I get underway of introducing you to this um, this games design, uh, first I want to give you an overview of uh, the project yeah all right so um in this section here um first first stage is the game design which is like the outline of the game itself um and all the rules that are going to be needed to be programmed into the game once we get underway um inside of stage two stage two is the first section where we go into game maker and we start basically um using the game design to build the game um, and we're going to be using drag and drop first of all. So this is my first tutorial and only probably tutorial series that's going to cover drag and drop. Uh, it's kind of just to get new people into Game Maker and understanding how it works. Um, if you already know Game Maker, just bear with this series because it will also convert later on to GML. Um, the second, the, sorry, the third stage is um, the graphics uh, development section, and this is going to be in Photoshop. Um, or Pixlr if you don't own Photoshop, uh, which is a kind of similar package. And then um, the games design, the game sort of dev stuff at the end is going to be converting all of the drag and drop section into game maker language and also like just basically improving the game, yeah, to make it more playable, more playable and fun. And also cover a little bit of stuff that you can customize it and make the game yourself, your own. Um, so this is awesome air hockey. Um, this is uh, the game's design concept presentation. And basically I'm going to be walking you through the game itself, the game design itself, um, covering all the aspects of the design before we actually get into the making of the game. Generally, when you're making a game, especially when you're making a, a proper uh, complete game, you want to um, make sure that you have a design that you can follow so you know what you're doing through the stages. Okay, so generally the first thing that you want is a title page and inside the title page it will have the name of the game, your age rating, the platform that you want to sort of produce the game to, the game genre, and then the game type. So for this game title, um, the name is Awesome Air Hockey and it's kind of a bit of a cheesy name but kind of like it and it kind of fits the game style anyway once you see it. Um, the game rating is uh, 6 plus, so we want to make our games suitable for ages 6 and up. So this um, means sort of two things. Um, obviously, you don't want to have any sort of controversial content in your game um, because this kind of can lead to your game um, being banned in several countries if that's when you're trying to sell it and you hear about that sort of stuff all the time. So it's always good to sort of have a lower age rating than a higher age rating. And then the other one is, um, say your game is a controversial game and it gets banned in several countries, then if it's getting banned in those countries, then you can't sell it in those countries. So it kind of has a knock-on effect. Uh, the platform that we're developing this for is the PC. Um, by all means, if you want to in the future to make it so you can use it on a mobile device, then go for it. Uh, the game genre is like a sports simulator um, and the game type is going to be like a multiplayer game. So it's going to be a two-player game that you can play with your friends. Uh, the gameplay and covering the game rules, so this is like a breakdown of the game itself and you typically want to outline the rules of your game sort of as simply as possible so people can understand it, yeah? So if you think about how air hockey works then this should be sort of familiar. Each player uses a paddle to knock the, the puck around, to knock the puck off the walls in order to score goals, um, in order to score goals, yeah. Uh, then each player uh, has to defend their goal mouth in order to prevent the other player from scoring goals. So you have your paddle to block the puck from going in your goal while trying to knock it in the other person's goal. Um, then you, then each player, basically the player that scores nine goals first uh, will win the game and then the game's over. And yeah, that's basically the end of that. Um, the game controls is kind of like the setup. Uh, for how your game is going to work and kind of something you really need to think about when developing a game So the game view itself, this is going to be a top-down aerial view So that's how we're going to view the game inside of Game Maker uh, The game controls are going to be using the keyboard and um, Basically, I've got player one with W and S controls and player two with up and down and The positioning of the controls is basically in this picture You can easily see that 
they're sort of spread out even though it's on one game device one sort of input device rather um the players aren't going to be bumping into each other when they're when they're playing the game and they're, they're clearly sort of labeled so that you can understand where where you each player is going to be um in this section this is the concept art so this is how this is what defines what the game will look like um so my game it or this game even is going to be using sort of a pen and paper drawn graphics sort of style potentially supported with stationery um obviously none of these pictures are, are air hockey but it gives you like the look and feel of what the game's going to look like and the kind of look and feel i want the game to have is as if like you're playing it in the back of your maths book with your mate in the back of a class when you really should be getting on with work um and you know using stuff that's sort of a readily available to you inside of a sort of lesson um this is a mock uh mock mock up of what your graphics is going to look like uh, typically in games when you're designing them you want to kind of have a mock up to sort of show what things will look like on the screen this one was obviously created inside a game maker so it's kind of really crude and it's not that good but it's it's kind of good enough for um, just sort of developing a concept. Obviously, I've made this game before and I've got the Photoshop graphics and all that stuff. So you wouldn't really have this in your design. But because obviously I'm showing you the game itself, I've also got like a sort of finished mock up that I did in Photoshop. Um, and you can see that I've replaced the, the paddles with um, actual like erasers or rubbers. And uh, the, the puck itself is like a scrunched up piece of paper. Um, the paper that you're playing on has like coffee stains on it and it's kind of ripped on the edges and you can see like the desk in the background um, down the bottom you have the name of the game awesome air hockey written in my crude handwriting and then you have the score and that's also using sort of drawn like a custom font or something like that to draw draw the values of the game and that's kind of what it's going to look like um in this section this is the core mechanisms um, and this is going over how the game will work here so these are the rules of the individual uh, parts of your game and how they all sort of communicate together and, and work um, and so going to the first one the first one is the puck and you can sort of see it in the top sort of diagram to the side which is labeled with that box um, the name of the object is going to be obj underscore puck and it's going to be used to score goals so that's what the purpose is and then below you have the object rules and this is kind of like the sort of programming rules of how this object will work and you kind of think about it how it would work in the real real world and then just put it into short sentences so the first one you have uh, it moves around the screen or the rink because it's kind of like an ice rink style um, it will collide with walls and when it hits a wall it will bounce um, it will collide with players and when it hits a player paddle it will bounce or like deflect off anyway um, then if it moves into a goal uh, the opposite player who who basically hit it into that goal will score a point um, it basically if it goes into a goal uh, it will reset its position after a goal is scored so it will go back into the center of the screen and if one player exceeds nine goals then the game will end uh, the next uh, game mechanic or or mechanism um, is uh, basically the paddles so you can see labeled with the boxes in the diagram so there's going to be two paddles so one for each player and they can have slightly different controllers but the rules are basically the same so you have obj underscore pad 01 and obj underscore pad 02 and these are the ob these are basically the objects these are the things that the players have direct control over yeah so these are the things that they actually control um, whereas the puck itself is you control by using your pad to sort of knock into it. So it's, it's like not direct control. Um, anyway, the object rules are uh, the paddle uh, moves in two directions, uh, which which is controlled by the player. The paddle is controlled by either the WS key or the up and down keys. Uh, the paddle can't move through the walls, which is like the boundaries of the um, sort of playable area. And the paddle uh, causes the puck to bounce. So when it when the paddle hits the puck, it will cause it to deflect. So these are the rules that these paddles, these pads are going to sort of um, adhere to. Uh, the next me 
The next mechanism is the score object, which you can see is, uh, is labeled or highlighted with the box um, over the top of the diagram. Um, it, stores the, it stores the score for each player and the object rules, basically if the puck goes into, into the goal zone of player two, then player one will score a point and vice versa. If a score value for any particular player exceeds uh, nine, then the game will end. If the game ends, then the score and the score with the score exceeding nine, then that player wins the game and probably go to a win screen. Um, the next object is the wall, and you can kind of see it's highlighted with the sort of blue box around the perimeter. Um, this keeps the puck inside the game area and also keep the player inside the game area. So it's kind of the restrictions to the playable zone on the screen. Um, it's going to be a solid object that blocks the player and it's a solid object that also blocks the puck and uh, causes it to bounce and like deflect off. Yeah. And then finally, the final um, game mechanism is uh, the sort of the goals, the goal mouth, sorry. Um, so the object name is obj underscore goal um, p1 or obj underscore goal p2 and basically these, the purpose of these is to allow each player to score and it's an object that's going to go over the goal mouths of the um, sort of the graphics that's drawn in the diagram um, basically if uh, if the puck collides with um, with with either goal um, objects then um, the, the appropriate got the appropriate player will score a goal. If the puck collides, uh, if the puck collides with uh, the goals, then it will reset to the center of the screen and basically restart the round. So if, say, one player scores, then that player will get a plus one score, and then the puck will reset to the center of the screen and then start the round up again, and it will just go on and on and on. Okay, so that's typically how the game's going to work. Um, during the development of the game, we'll keep referring back to this document just so we can see what the next stage is that we need to implement when we're developing the game. Um, okay, so the next part is uh, what's next, and the part that's next in this, this series is stage two, which is Game Maker Studio, and we'll be going over the drag and drop and basically uh, making the game stage by stage according to the design. And this is how um, we're going to put this together. So the next, the next tutorial, the next tutorial will be uh, stage two. Okay, thank you, and goodbye.